Are you at Hebrews 12, 12? Read it, Hebrews 12, 12. Everybody want to go. Did you hear that? Do you know why they say feebleness? Because there are some of you when you come to church, right? They say this amount of carriers of his present. When they say stand up, it's time for praise and worship. You're sitting down. You see, we always ask you to stand up. Because this fever news will always want you to sit down. If this knees must be down, it should be bowing. Amen. I bow my knee to worship you, Lord. If the knees are not bowing down as a kneeling, you should be doing what? Standing up. And if you are standing up, what should your hand be doing? Your hand should be? When you are blessed by the teaching, by the word of God, you're saying amen and waving the hand. So it says lift up what? The holy hands that hang down. Are your hands always up or hanging down? But they say when you enter the presence of God, you do what? That and the feeble, those of you who like to sit down, there is no building for you in heaven. But I say it is not too late. You can start building the house now. Through your right worship. Through your correct worship. Everybody read it again. One, two, three, go. Did you hear that? It's a month of. So the first way you'll be carrying the presence of God is by your mannerism of worship. Amen. Right? Take me to 1 verse 20. No, everybody read. So when you want to give glory to God, he says all his promises are what? Yes. So when the man of God is preaching your blood, you say yes. Who used to hear me do that? Yes yeah means yes. yes. Right? Yes. You say yes. yes. You say amen. amen. You say glory. glory. Do you understand? You say hallelujah, praise God, and then you can jump up, right? You speak in tongues. Are you understanding? Like, there is a New Testament way to worship God. In the Old Testament, they used to worship God with sacrifices of bulls and of cows. They used to enter into the temple with the burning of incense. But Christ came as the Passover lamb and he died and he said he has put an end to the sacrifice of bulls and of calves, right? And he also put an end to the worship through incense and he says your incense should be the lifting up of your holy hands. In the Old Testament too, they used to clap hands. Read me Psalms 47. But when we come to the New Testament, they did not ask us to clap hands. They said we should lift up holy hands. Psalms 47 verse 1. Psalms 47 verse 1. Yes. Oh, clap your hands. Oh, all clap ye your people. hands. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Okay, you see, that was a shout of praise. Right? But it was for the Old Testament saints. They were asked to clap for God. Do you know why they were clapping for God? You know, God did not inhabit the people. He was not indwelling in the people. And now the belt tabernacles, where the Holy Spirit of God will come and live inside at that moment to manifest his power. But today, Christ lives in you and I. And his power is manifested every second, every minute, yes. every time. Yes. So you don't need to be clapping for what God has already done. Hallelujah. When you clap again for what God had done on the cross and is manifesting in your life today, you are saying that you doubted God's power. Say, God don't do so until we are not be expectant. But you see, when a governor enters an occasion and he farotes people with 5,000, 5, you can be clapping for him. Because you were not expecting 5,000 when you were going for the occasion. Oh Jesus, these people are not understanding me. No way, did you understand it? Did, read it again. Read the other one, Ezekiel 6 verse 11. From the New Living Translation. New Living Translation. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Okay. Clap your hands in honor. Yes. And stamp your feet. Cry out because of all. So he used to give them a pattern that they will use to worship him in every arena, in every situation, oh, yeah. in every place. Like this one, he, he added that they should clap their hands and stamp their feet. Oh, yeah. 
Are you understanding? Hallelujah. That was a command for them to worship God. But today we are led by the Spirit. Right? And he says everything he has done in the New Testament are already wrapped in his promises. And all his promises are what? Yes. Yeah. And, and they the are amen. amen. And he says lift up the holy hands that anger. And the people knees. Amen. Let it worship God. Is somebody getting an understanding? Amen. Now I took this at the beginning because I want you to understand I can be teaching or when I'm ending my teaching I can ask you to clap for me. I don't have power to do anything. But I cannot ask you to clap for God. To clap for Jesus. Is he understood now? Oh my God. Are you not if you understood your, your amen should be going up with your hand. Let me understand. Yes, so yes. woman of God, what they are adding here is that they are they are several like what the man of God is adding here is that they are several uh Wait, words to use to with your words. God. He amen, amen means 13. let it be so. 15. When you say hallelujah, it means God be praised. Amen. That's the Hebrew tongue. So in teaching, we also emphasize when they are preaching, you need to be responding with these various words. Quotes. When they preach, you say hallelujah. It doesn't mean you should be robotic to stick to only to say amen. Yes, say of amen, course. It says let it be so. Hallelujah means God be praised. Amen. So when a teaching is going on, whatsoever in the house of God, you expect these expressions. Of, of glorification towards the most high God. Amen. So there are different names of God also that you apply to these things. Father. Hallelujah. We used to play here, Abba Father. Abba That's Father. in essence you're attributing That's glory right. to the most high God. Which are all to you, but because of your character, it is hardly being expressed. Yeah, no, so they when don't the know how to You have God. to say Abba Father. You know it's the name of God. You say Hallelujah. Glory it means God. God be praised or glory be to God. That's the meaning of Hallelujah. When you say amen, you're saying let it be so. It's like a seal to that. So that needs to be in you. And we know that as the woman of God is putting the character in the New Testament, it's 1 Timothy 2. That we shall men lift up holy hands everywhere, praising the Lord. So you need to start cultivating consciously that character and not saying that I'm tired, I'm tired. Amen. So get the different words that God has placed for us to glorify amen. Him. Amen. Amen. We believe there somebody is, Yahweh. is learning. There is right? hallelujah. There is amen. So those words, read it, read it. One, two, three, go. Okay, so it says, let us offer the sacrifice of praise continually. They bring you the Rema word of God. You're, you're like this. You're like this. Always looking dumbfounded. That's the reason you're struggling with your Christian life. You struggle to be in Thursday service. You struggle to be in Sunday fellowship. Struggle to be for evangelism. Because the fruits of your lips continually is not being rendered unto God. So you need to be shouting hallelujah. When they teach you, you shout hallelujah. You jump up. You worship God with your hands. Hallelujah. Glory. You give praise the Lord. Yahweh. Jesus is Lord. My father. Abba father. The ears are built. These pillars of salt are still standing. Your voice is not talking. I'm teaching you to use your lips. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 